On October 17, 1777, General Burgoyne surrenders. It's a turning point. The victory persuades Britain's greatest rival, France, to join the war on America's side. Now the French Navy will force the British to fight a war on two fronts, land and sea. But first, Washington must face his greatest challenge as leader. He makes his winter camp in Pennsylvania, a place called Valley Forge. In freezing temperatures, the rebels build 900 huts in just 40 days. Each houses a dozen men. He has an army of 14,000 men and no houses. And the Continental Congress has failed to provide him with resources. And by willpower, by courage, by leadership, by cajoling, he has to hold the army together in the middle of a terrible winter. Joseph Plum Martin, veteran of the Battle of New York, is at Valley Forge. It's a desolate place. We're now in a truly forlorn condition. No clothing no provisions, and as disheartened as can be. Our prospect is indeed dreary. Right, sir. A fifth of the soldiers have no shoes. With little clean water, dysentery spreads through the camp. Within weeks, 2,000 men are sick, and they run out of meat. Down to their last 25 barrels of flour, the men survive on fire cake, a mixture of flour and water. Blood. It's going to take cold winters at Valley Forge. It's going to take losses. General Washington, he was a great general to be able to uplift his army during Valley Forge during that winter and still be able to fight. I wish I would have been there. I wish I could have fought for him, because I damn sure would have. But Washington's army soon faces an enemy far more lethal than the British. Smallpox. The revolution breaks out during the worst smallpox epidemic in U.S. history. The deadly airborne virus spreads through the British prison ships. Isolated from the disease for generations, the American colonists have little resistance to it. And there's no cure. Victims break out in blisters and sores. The virus spreads through the blood, invading healthy cells which it kills, producing more of the virus in the process. Four in ten victims die. Once smallpox arrives at Valley Forge, it spreads through the cramped huts like wildfire. Washington survived smallpox as a child. Now he decides to take a gamble with one of the most daring experiments in U.S. military history. Surgeons have learned about inoculation from African slaves. They harvest pus from a smallpox victim. smear the live virus into cuts on the skin of a healthy patient. The inoculation spreads the infection, but at a slower rate. A week after exposure, the victim's white blood cells create antibodies. These attack and kill the virus that causes smallpox before the disease can spread. But it's a dangerous race against time. To survive, the patient's immune system has to work faster than the virus or will run out of control. One in 50 of those inoculated will die. But Washington's gamble pays off. New cases of smallpox fall from several thousand to just a few dozen.